All right, guys, welcome back. Now, in this lecture, we're going to actually implement the view model and we're going to use the life cycles functionality of the view model and the live data that we talked about. So let's go right ahead and right click on the view model package. I'm going to select new and Kotlin file. And this is going to be list view model. Make sure you select class as the kind of file you are creating. And there we go, we have our view model. Now, this view model will take, um, we won't need any parameters, but we will extend from view model. And I think this one has a constructor that takes no parameters, so we are good to go. Now, um, we will need three live data variables here. So we're going to say val dogs equals mutable live data of type list of dog breed. So that is one mutable live data. And this will provide the information for the actual list of dogs um, that we retrieve from our data source. Um, from our data source, which can be the backend API, which can, which can be a local database or any other data source that we have. We need another live data, which is dogs load error. And that's going to be a mutable live data of type um, Boolean. And this live data will notify whoever is listening to this view model will notify that there's an error. It won't specify which kind of error it is, but we, it will just specify that there is a generic error with the retrieval of the data and they need to act accordingly based on that information. Okay, so we have a Boolean, a true means error, false means no error. Then we have a loading, which is also a mutable live data of type Boolean. And this live data will tell whoever is listening that um, the system is loading. So the data has not yet arrived, but we do not have an error. So we need to display that spinner, um, or at least the view decides what, they, what um, needs to be displayed. In our application's case, the view will display a spinner for the user. Now, our list view model has one method um, that is uh, accessible from outside called refresh. And that will simply refresh the information. Now, um, we're going to keep it simple for this lecture. We will expand the um, functionality here when we implement back, um, sorry, backend API information retrieval, right? Um, but for now, what I would like to do is simply create some random um, mock data locally and display that, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say val dog1 equals dog breed, and I'm going to create a random dog breed here. So I'm going to give it a ID of one, a dog breed of, let's say, um, corgi, then what else do we need? We need a lifespan of 15 years. This, this is just random information, right? Breed group. Okay, um, bred for, we don't actually need this information at the moment, but I just need to put something here. Uh, this is temperament. Next up is um, image URL, which we do not have, and that is it. So I'm going to copy and paste this three times, and I'm going to change just a few elements here. So I'm going to have dog two and dog three. Then the ID is going to be two and three. Um, now, dog breed, what else do we have? We have Labrador and we have 
Rottweiler. I think that's how you spell it. I'm not sure. I might be wrong, but it doesn't matter because we will delete this information later. So let's put some random information here. 20, okay? Um, the rest stay the same because we're not actually going to use them. Now, I want to create a list of these um, dog objects. So I'm going to say about dog dog list equals array list of dog one, dog two, dog three. Oh, sorry. Um, those need to go inside the parentheses here. Let me just delete that and start again. So array list of this is dog breed, dog one, dog two, dog three. There we go. So that's better. So um, what we need to do here is we need to pass the information to these mutable live data. So I'm going to say dogs dot value is going to be dog list. Next, dogs load error dot value equals false because we can say we have no error and loading dot value equals false. Okay, so we don't have um, any loading or error at the moment. Of course, we can play around with these um, values so that we see how our layout behaves and we will do that shortly. Now, let's head on back to our list fragment and here is where we will actually use that information from the list view model. Now, you will notice that that is pretty much everything we need for the view model. So there is no knowledge on the view model side of the fragment. Okay, so the view model doesn't know about the view. It doesn't know about it. It doesn't care. There should be a, a very strong separation between the view model and the, the view, in our case, list fragment. Okay, so there's no link to our views. That is kind of the basics uh, basis of the MVVM architecture. Now, in the view model, uh, sorry, in the list fragment, here at the top, we will declare a few variables. So we're going to say private late init var view model, and that's going to be of type list view model. And we also need a private val dogs list adapter that's going to be our dogs list adapter that we've created that takes a empty array list so array list of so that's how we create the dogs list adapter now we want to actually use these two um, values or um, variables here to instantiate our interface so we're going to use a lifecycle method of the list fragment called on view created okay we've used this lifecycle method in the past now we're going to use it first to instantiate the view model so the way we instantiate the view model is we're going to say view model equals view model providers dot off this as the fragment dot get list view model colon colon class dot java okay so we now have an instance of our view model inside our fragment now we're going to say view model dot refresh okay so this is going to call our refresh method it's going to generate some dog objects a dog list and it's going to update the variables here now what do we do to actually retrieve that information here well first we're going to instantiate our dogs list okay so the dogs list if I command or control click on the list our dogs list is the recycler view right so we're gonna say here dogs list dot apply 
and we're going to apply a couple of things. So first, a layout manager. We need a layout manager, and we're going to use a default Android layout manager called Linear Layout Manager. What this does is basically it allows the system to order our elements sequentially in a linear fashion uh, from top to bottom, okay? There are other types of layout managers. So for instance, we could have a grid layout manager and that will arrange our elements in a grid and we need to give them um, the number of columns, okay? So we have kind of a matrix um, alignment, but we want for now, we just want a linear layout manager. All right, what else? We need to attach the adapter. So adapter is going to be dogs list adapter. There we go. So that's all for our dogs list. And then we will have a method called observe view model that we will create now. So here below, we're going to say fun observe view model. And what this is going to do is basically is going to use the variables that we've created here to update the layout based on the values that we get, right? So we're going to say um, view model dot dogs dot observe. So we're going to observe that live um, that uh, variable that um, where is it? that mutable life data variable okay we're going to observe it here and based on the value that it gets we will update the interface here so in this observer um, we have to pass this as the owner and then we're going to have a observer where we will actually implement our um, our functionality this will give us a list of dogs okay so dogs is going to be list of dog breed and here we're going to say dogs question mark dot let so we're checking if the dogs list is not null and in that case we're gonna we're gonna say um, dogs list dot visibility equals view dot visible and we're going to say dogs list adapter dot update dogs list and we're going to pass the list that we get from the model and that is pretty much it now here we have observed the dogs variable but we need uh, to observe the other two variables that we have here just so that we can update the um, the layout correctly the view correctly so we're going to say view model dot which one do we have load error let's say dot observe and here we're going to do the same thing we're going to do this and then an observer and this will give us a variable is error we can name this variable or not if you don't give it a name you just call it it okay and you can still use it now if we get an error is error the uh, question mark dot let so if we have an error here then we're going to say list error dot visibility equals view dot visible so all we're going to do is we're going to make this error message visible okay that's all we need to do here next up view model dot loading dot observe we have this and an observer and let's um, give it a name as well is loading all right now what do we do when we get some information on this variable now this variable is a bit different because both true and false statements here values mean something for us if the value is true then we need to show the spinner if the value is false then we need to hide the spinner so that's what we need to do here we can say something like um, loading view dot visibility equals if um, 
wait, before we do that, let me cut this and check for is loading dot question mark dot let. Then we can do that. So loading dot visibility. If it, so if it is true, then we say view dot visible else view dot gone. So that means basically the visibility of the spinner is going to be if it's loading, then visible, else if it's not loading, then it will be gone. Okay, so that is quite necessary. What I would also like to do here is I would like to show and hide the other views based on this loading spinner or not. So we're gonna say if it then if this is loading then we're gonna say list error dot visibility equals view dot gone and dogs list dot visibility equals view dot gone and the reason we do this is because when something happens when we refresh the layout this is the one that gets called and we need to hide all other views when we do display this list okay so if this is true then we need to show the list the loading view and we need to hide the list error and hide the dogs list all right so that is pretty much it pretty much all we need to do for our functionality i think that should be fine let's run this application and test to see what we get um, in a in an emulator or if you prefer to run on a real device you can do that as well All right, guys, so we have a um, we have some data for our application. Now we can see that mostly everything worked out fine. OK, we have three elements because we defined three dog objects here. We have our list. Um, the only problem that I see is that this this um, error message is still displayed, even though we have our um, we have our final list. So there must be a problem in the way we handle that particular um, live data variable in our list fragment. So let's have a look. What happens when the error is, um, is true? So if we have an error, we mark this as visible. What happens if this is false? Well, we don't actually handle that case in this um, implementation. So let's actually go ahead and handle it. We're going to say here, if it is true, then we do view.visible, else we will do view.gone. Okay, so that should handle the problem of displaying the information there. Let's have a look. All right, so there we go. Now, since we have a visible, an error false, then the visibility is gone and we no longer see that information um, for the error. 
So that is pretty much what I was expecting to see here. Just a list of three elements. And if you want to play around with the view model, you can put more information here. Or we can simply, let's try this out. I'm going to not give the dog list information here. I'm just going to leave the loading to true. And let's see what that is like. Now, what I would expect here is to just see a spinner without actually seeing anything in that list. There we go. So now we just see the spinner because we don't have any dog information here and we've set the loading value to true. So this is what the user will see when they um, when the data is loading from the data source, whether that is a backend API or a local database. Right. So I'm going to close this and going back into the view model, I'm going to undo the changes and I'm just going to leave um, the information as it is here. Okay, so we're going to pass the dogs value. We're going to pass the list and we're going to uh, put the loading value to false. And that will just give us the list that we have. And we're going to end the lecture here. This is the information that I wanted to put in the view model for now. Now, of course, we will implement a lot more information here because here is where we actually get the data from a backend API, or at least we call the classes that uh, that perform that action. Or here is where we get the data from the database. Um, however, we will define the algorithm to do that, right? But for now, I think this is enough. This shows how um, a view model works, how a view model is instantiated inside a view, okay? Which in our case is a list fragment. The advantage of doing it like this is that whatever happens to this list fragment when it is created, destroyed, um, rotate, the screen is rotated and anything else that happens to this, the system will provide us with the correct list view model and the correct uh, data of our variables. So we can resume our functionality at the point where we left off without having to manage um, state for our list fragment, the system does that for us automatically. So that simplifies a lot um, what our um, what uh, we need to implement, right? We simply need to call this line and everything is um, fine after that. Right, um, that is all for this lecture. I hope um, that is clear. I hope you can um, understand why this MVVM architecture is very useful for Android development. And we will be using and extending this implementation in future lectures. That's it for this lecture. Thank you for following along and I will see you in the next one.